I'm your host, Taryn Winterbrill, but just call me TWB. First up on today's show, fiscal cliff or fiscal hype, or personally, as I like to say, fiscal stupidity. With December 31st right around the corner, we'll discuss what it means for your wallet. Then in the aftermath of the devastating shootings in Connecticut, the topic of gun control is at the forefront and a deeper national dialogue is underway. Is meaningful legislative reform on the horizon? We'll get into both sides of this extremely controversial debate. And from there, we'll continue the conversation surrounding the Newtown shootings and delve into post-traumatic stress disorder. In the wake of such a horrific event, we'll discuss its causes, symptoms, and treatment. And as a nation mourns, we'll also discuss how to talk to your kids about what happened. And then on a much lighter note, we're going to change gears and talk about some holiday cheer. First, we'll look at some of the ways that people use this time of year for community building. Then we'll guide you through an interfaith holiday season. From Hanukkah, Christmas to Kwanzaa, we'll discuss how to honor togetherness amidst cultural differences. But before we get the conversation started, I can't wait. Let's meet our all-star panel once again. Let's start with WJ. I'm W.J. O'Reilly, and I partner with Harvard College and its Center for Public Interest Careers. Welcome, W.J. Good to see you. J. B. J. P. B. J. B. P. There we I'm go. James That's what Peterson, I said. <laughs> Director of Africana Studies at Lehigh University and contributor to thegrio.com. Welcome, welcome. And Francesca. Francesca Maxime, I'm a news anchor here at Ebru TV and the author of Root a Diverse Memoir. All right, welcome everybody. We'll get into the conversation in just a moment. I'll also get James's initials right. Uh, all right, December 31st is right around the corner. That means we're getting closer and closer to going off of that proverbial fiscal cliff. Watch out. But the bigger question is, will a quick fix really suffice or is it time for some real comprehensive tax reform? Take a look. Over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of talk about deadlines we're facing on jobs and taxes. and investment. With the upcoming fiscal cliff coming closer and closer by the day, there are still many questions and unresolved issues. Despite working together, the Democrats and Republicans each have their own plans to fix the issue. And the people who this will affect the most, the American taxpayer, still have several questions. And it's time to spend less money, and it has to be done equally. I mean, it has to be shared on both ends. It's not a... It's not a Democratic thing. It's not a Republican thing. It's pretty, it just strikes me as pretty simple. That's what I How do. will federal tax plans currently being debated in Congress impact your wallet? Also, with the talk and news coverage, how much of the fiscal cliff debate is just political hype? Ah, the clock is ticking as Congress debates tax hiking, but... And, last but not least, some say what the country needs is not a quick fix, but comprehensive tax reform across the board. If so, what would it look like? What would it look like? Uh, to answer that question, how will it affect your wallet? Uh, the average family taxes will go up about $3,500. More specifically, people making between $40,000, $65,000 a year will see an average of a sixty. $672 increase in what they pay in taxes. Uh, if you make between $65,000 and $109,000, you'll see your taxes increase by an average of about $1,100. So these are obviously some significant amounts uh, for the people making uh, not that much money to live in the country. Mm -hmm. We do. Right. Thoughts panel. I mean, this is just really, like I said earlier, it is fiscal stupidity. I mean, come <laughs> on. Let's uh, c compromise. Hello. I mean, I want to take these Republicans and Yes, put them through a wall. Sorry, I said it. <laughs> Com compromise is, uh, is kind of a dirty word in Washington right now. Um, you know, there's a part of me that is not really that afraid of the fiscal cliff in the sense that once we go over the cliff, I think the president has a little bit more leverage to make sure we get the kind of deal that we need to have. And then we need to separate this from tax reform because we do need to have tax reform. That's a more complex process and I think requires a lot more attention than what we have in this particular moment. But for right now, we need to let the Bush tax cuts expire on the wealthiest folk here. Okay. And we also need to implement very, very conservatively some of the cuts that need to be implemented in terms of our social safety net. I think Social Security has got to be off the table at this point in time because, again, that, yeah. that's pretty solvent right now, but it also requires more time and attention. And I think we should spend some time thinking about how to make Medicare more efficient um, and how to protect Medicaid as well. So, so there's things to do on both sides. Um, I do think the president has compromised quite a bit over the last several right. weeks. But as we saw with Boehner this week, yeah, he can't, he can't even get his caucus to, yeah. to vote for his own. His own Boehner, he I mean, fell yeah. off his own cliff he into did. his own hole. He did. So much for Plan B. Yeah. And we thought that it might be a, a, a discussion about uh, women's reproductive rights, but no. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not, not caucus. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> not, not exactly. I, yeah. I, I, I think that John Boehner kind of uh, you know, has egg on his face right now, and he probably is 
is going into the the, the holidays uh, not quite as as happy or as confident as he was even a week ago. But I mean, we saw Obama come up uh, to 400 grand, 500 grand on taxes. We saw Boehner come back with again, uh, you know, a more ridiculous plan. I, I think with it's nothing. very partisan at this point and a time when we really need to be coming together. And yes. before the president headed off to Hawaii, he made that plea again and said, "All right, guys, that's fine, but I'm going to see you next week. And we're going to go back to work." Said, okay, and uh, right. you know, to James's yeah. point, if it doesn't happen before now, I think the White House has a little more leverage. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm not a tax expert, far from it. But I think that you know, it, all in life really comes down to negotiation. Right. It's being able to sit down with somebody else and, and hammer out a, 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 some kind of a middle point. And I think, unfortunately, the Republicans have gotten into this kind of uh, kind of dragging of their feet, kind of this professional inertia that they've been operating not under. Not all of the Republicans. Not all of them, the but I'm saying, but largely, but outside. largely thinking that dragging their heels is going to solve anything or gain them more votes and that and nothing could be further from the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of truth, that's the stupidity part. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, not all of it. We'll get to it in a moment. Uh, the president has a little bit to say about this topic, of course. Let's take a look. Right now, middle class tax cuts are set to expire at the end of the year. Time's running out. And there are two things that can happen. First, if Congress does nothing, every family in America will see their income taxes automatically go up on January 1st. A typical middle class family of four would get a $2,200 tax hike. That would be bad for families, it'd be bad for businesses, and it would drag down our entire economy. Now Congress can avoid all of this by passing a law that prevents a tax hike on the first $250,000 of everybody's income. That means 98% of Americans and 97% of small businesses wouldn't see their income taxes go up by a single dime. Even the wealthiest Americans would get a tax cut on the first $250,000 of their income. And families everywhere would enjoy some peace of mind. The Senate has already done their part. Now we're just waiting for Republicans in the House to do the same thing. But so far, they've put forward an unbalanced plan that actually lowers rates for the wealthiest Americans. If we want to protect the middle class, then the math just doesn't work. I, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, we've all been doing a lot of reading about this, and it just seems that the Republicans want no tax increases under any circumstances. I don't understand this concept. I mean, the wealthy mm. will remain wealthy well, even if they're paying Grover a few Norquist more dollars. Grover Norquist understands that concept. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, right. that was the pledge yeah. that they all made, and so they had some, you know, right. obligation in their minds to, to go through with it. Uh, but then again, you've seen more recently everybody backing off of that, including mm -hmm. plenty of Republicans, including plenty of people that bailed mm -hmm. out of the Plan B proposal that John Boehner had on Thursday, simply because they realized that it can't work that way anymore. It's absurd. Listen, there, and let's be clear here. There are some benefits to this fiscal cliff that are not beyond the sort of tax discussion. On the one hand, you know, if we do let the Bush tax cuts go, that will help our deficit tremendously. It'll be painful and hurtful for middle class sure. and lower income families, but it actually will address some of the serious problems in terms of our long term but deficit. Then we don't, don't we dip deeper into a recession? Well, we may. We may dip deeper, deeper into because you need the people who actually spend. See, rich folk don't spend money. Right. right? The people who really spend money are the middle class mm -hmm. and actually working class families who spend beyond their means. That's what drives the economy. So there's great sort of economic research that suggests that we should not let those uh, tax cuts, uh, we should let those tax cuts sort of uh, remain in place for, for those groups. But then also remember that the fiscal cliff is a few other things, it's sequestration as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of cuts that we need to get into our military budget, because another one of our long-term yeah. problems is our deficit, right. or, I mean, our defense spending, yeah. we'll get that automatically with the fiscal cliff. I don't know if we'll get it any other way. So I think if they do come up with a deal, mm -hmm. what's interesting is that some of the big areas in our government where we actually can and need to make cuts, not Medicare and Social Security, right. but defense spending, defense spending you know, right. we could mm -hmm. get that through the fiscal cliff process and we might not get that any other way. So something not def definitely that we should avoid. We should perhaps look forward to it. Well, we, I, right. I think there's great arguments there's to be made to look forward to go over. To WJ, cliff. what do yes. you think? I mean, uh, he's very he's in favor of falling over the cliff. Do you think that's in our in our? Uh, <laughs> sometimes I think it's we, sometimes we have to take the bitter medicine, and I think that this may be one of those moments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then all, this all way, in favor sponsor. of diving I, over I, the I cliff. Am, I am as of now. Too, Francesca, are you? Hmm. Well, I, I think to James's point, I think that there are benefits that people haven't necessarily discussed at length, and I think that uh, you know. 
to look at it solely as a rise in, you know, middle earning taxpayers, you know, by anywhere from two to three grand or a year or whatever. I mean, that's certainly one way of looking at it. Nobody wants to see their taxes raised, and certainly that's what the White House has been saying. However, to look at um, more of the aggregate issues that are here, uh, including defense spending, including Medicare spending, Medicaid spending, the White House has been pretty uh, slim on, on wanting to have any kind of uh, cuts to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, quote unquote entitlement programs. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, they may have to cave a little bit to streamline the process a little bit more, including what happens with uh, the Affordable Care Act and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, the kinds of payments that physicians are going to be getting and the, the kinds mm -hmm. of payments that we make uh, for the elderly in terms of health care. Also, one of the things that, uh, you know, would would require further review is the protection of health care for, for children. So right. we're talking about some, some real big social service issues here. And while the White House has certainly put up uh, plenty of, you know, plenty of walls against, you know, cutting any of their social service programs. I think that if we do go over the cliff and some of those can be streamlined, then that's not a bad thing. So to mm -hmm. James's point, yes. On the other hand, if you're just looking at it from yeah. this place of saying, you know, look, I, I only earn 50 grand a year and I'm going to have to right. spend a few more grand in taxes, Unfortunately, that's all the, and that's you know, the problem. middle class families, how will this affect my life? That's how it's affecting right. their and life. Right. You know, defense but spending I, I isn't affecting if we talk to some of those middle class families and said, hey, would you be willing to, to deal with this sort of tax hike as long as everyone had to do it, as long as the wealthy had to do it as well? Mm -hmm. I guarantee you a lot of middle class families would say yes. Right. As long as the top 2% <laughs> also have to pay higher taxes, we're willing to, you know, we, you know, the middle class and the working class has shown that it's very much willing to contribute to and work through this economic challenges. The question is, do the top 2%, top 1%, are they willing to do what, it? I'm, what not so sure, I'm not sure I agree with you on that, James. I don't think the average person wants to see uh, any of their very, very hard-fought income go anywhere into taxes, even if it means that the, the rich are going uh, to, to bring it as I, well. I, I don't think, think they're willing think, to do I, that. I think we well, could, if we did a survey, times. these are well, tough times, but what he did, if we did a survey, People are tired of the top 2% getting over on this economy. As How they is this ever going to get solved? If the, Republic, if the House never compromises, it sounds like they are not, no, nothing's going to happen well, here. And when will, will it happen? Because I, I don't think that, I think that this week was a real lesson. I mean, I we had so. the debt ceiling right. argument last mm -hmm. summer, and that was locking horns. And Ridiculous. then we had, you know, it, it's just, I think that the partisanship is getting to a point where even, you know, we see Olympia Snow resigning from Maine. We see yeah. people who are more moderate we see a Republicans party in decline. just leaving. Yes. And the Tea Party kind of taking a oh, fall it's in despite disarray. whatever happened yeah. in South Carolina recently <laughs> with yeah. the we, we won't even get into that today um, but you know I what I think it, it it's sort of highlighting is is and and as we will discuss later on Fresh Outlook today as well with the gun control debate I really think that it's showing how out of touch I think in a lot of ways yeah. the Republican Party is right now how mm -hmm. conservatively it has skewed to a point where it kind of doesn't make sense anymore yeah. I think the American public would say how out of touch Congress is with the approval ratings now at 11 yeah, percent for a while that's across yeah. the boards. Yeah, it's All right. pretty bad. We have one more piece, guys, I want to throw to. Um, uh, this is, a, I believe, uh, it's uh, Speaker Boehner uh, telling us what's on his mind. Take a look. Mr. Egg on House Speaker John Boehner signaled that he was still open to negotiations with the president on avoiding across-the-board tax increases set to take effect in January. However, he sounded pessimistic about reaching a grand deal. At some point, we're going to have to address uh, the spending problem that we have. Uh, but we can't cut our way to prosperity. We need real economic growth. And m many of us believe on both sides of the aisle, uh, the fundamental reform of our tax code uh, will help us get our economy moving faster and put more Americans back to work and more Americans on the tax rolls. Uh, how we get there, uh, God only knows. The Republican leader spoke the morning after he was forced by his members to abandon legislation that would have raised taxes on incomes above $1 million. As you know, the House uh, did not take up the tax bill last night uh, because uh, we didn't have the votes to pass it. It's not the outcome uh, that I wanted, uh, but that was the will of the House. Uh, so unless uh, the President and Congress uh, take action, uh, tax rates will go up on every American taxpayer and devastating defense cuts will go into effect in 10 days. Boehner said any deal with the president to avoid the looming fiscal cliff would require more compromise by Obama. Thursday's drama was a major personal defeat for the speaker, who retains the respect and affection of his Tea Party-infused conference, but sometimes has great difficulty getting them to follow his leadership.
All right, the clock is ticking, and we will certainly see how this unfolds. Fasten your seatbelts because we might. <laughs> yeah, we might revisit. This I don't know if there's though. airbags on the way down that physical cliff, but I guess we'll see. That, that uh, video, of ba video of Boehner, that, that's a beaten man. That's, yes. That, the body language is really, really he pathetic. Is. That man's going to lose his job, I predict. I don't know. And, I, and I, I think so. And I think actually there, there is a compromise in the office. All right, we'll talk about that after the break. What do you say? Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Up next on the agenda, gun control in the aftermath of the shootings in Connecticut. People are now talking about this extremely hot topic. More than ever. So, we're going to get into it. That's next on Fresh Outlook. Stay with us. He does look like a better man.